Hello and welcome to this uh, special episode of uh, Diary of a Common Man. My name is Salim Lalani and I wish to, first of all, thank you for your ongoing support, ongoing help with uh, your time, your emotions and your moral support. It is only because of that, that I've been able to come this far. So thank you and I hope and I wish and I pray that this support continues to happen uh, in the future as well. Second thing we will talk about is the updates on Nandi. Um, before we come to the issue of Aga Khani leader becoming my ally. The update with Nandi is twofolds, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne. So in Sydney, what has happened is they basically for the last eight, nine months, the, the food authority continually, continuously denied the existence of Nandi. And it took me a lot of uh, assertiveness, a lot of uh, convincing, a lot of complaining that the Nandi actually happens. It's a reality. But they refused it from the beginning. Then eventually they found it, as I said to you, Sydney Jamaat Khana was raided and they finally penetrated the, the Nandi area and they found that the Nandi does happen. But after denying the existence of Nandi, when they eventually found that Nandi happens and it happens, in violation of the Food Act of New South Wales, they refused to take action. To me, this can only mean corruption. But I have no evidence of corruption. Because when somebody is denying something that has that exists in the real world, when somebody disregards the law and this somebody is none other than the food authority then it is only natural for me to suspect corruption and the key word here is suspect we have not proven any corruption between ismaili jamaat and the food authority okay it is only a suspicion now, obviously, in Australia, we have a, an organization called ICAC, which basically deals with corruption by public uh, officers or public organizations. So I, as I spoke to the public, uh, sorry, ICAC, ICAC. Um, I think, I think the, the full form of uh, ICAC is independent commission against corruption. So I spoke to them, spoke to a lady called Anne, and I told her the story, this happened. And she encouraged me to lodge a complaint because she did seem to agree with me that there is something that is not right, that why would they first deny the existence of something that has been happening for, for a thousand years? And um, why would they, after discovering it, why would they basically say that they will not take any action? That is uh, very suspicious. So I have sent them a detailed uh, uh, account of, uh, of the issue of the matter that happened. So uh, to uh, bottom line, I have basically submitted referred the case to ICAC. Uh, we will now wait for their investigation to happen. What is happening inside the Food Authority? What is happening inside the Jamaat Khana? As I know more, I will keep you updated. Coming to uh, Melbourne. Melbourne was much better than New South Wales, Sydney. 
because melbourne did not have an issue with admitting that nandi is illegal it cannot happen okay but they are basically they they saw the aga khan thing on internet and they feel that these are humanitarians so they are in the process of registering the organization and in particular the lady nandi now nandi cannot be registered and there is a very simple reason for that the victorian food law uh victoria because melbourne happens to be in the state of victoria the victorian food law very clearly says that the food cannot be sold without registration so that we can inspect the 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 the, the kitchen the cooks the hygiene the temperature the storage etc now how are they going to check all that when there is no kitchen and there is no cook they are all unknown kitchens and the cooks are unknown you cannot register it's as simple as that anyway the information has been given to me that they are in the process of registering the nandi uh, the pro the activity of nandi so we'll see we'll see what excuse they find to register nandi as a legal process uh if it happens it will have to be referred to icac as well okay so that is that i'll keep you posted in relation to that um this is the photo of a building is is a district court in sydney and um, basically this is where wazir's case is basically unfolding as we speak so let me take you back about a month and a half i think it was in august sometime that uh, wazir got an invitation from the district court to appear uh, and uh, obviously the other party the the karim sumar and uh, shamshu pabani they also got the invitation to attend the district court so wazir didn't want to go without me so i basically accompanied him on that day and uh, but the other party did not turn up they sent their lawyers instead so karim and uh, shamshu did not turn up the lawyers turned up now the the uh, uh, wazir was standing against the lawyers and he was very intimidated in a district court kind of a situation uh we didn't have the money we didn't have the money to take the lawyer with us so we had lodged the claim against karim and shamshu on our own in fact i had drafted that claim but i soon i we found out on that day in the court that the judge rejected it judge said this is not the way to write a legal claim obviously it has been written by an amateur and that amateur happened to be me um but what do i do i don't have the money to spend on the lawyers so just said uh, so so what the other party did on that day when when the judge rejected that that's that the format of that claim the other party took the opportunity and requested the judge to to discard the case to write it off okay now judge saw something there he he saw he, he observed that this man is on his own and he can hardly speak english and he seems very intimidated he is a very common common man he is he is a common man and here we have two lawyers who are basically intimidating him 
So what the judge did implicitly is he took Wazir's side and he basically told Wazir that don't come here without a lawyer. Get a lawyer to write this claim. Okay. And he adjourned the case until this Thursday, the 5th of October. Now, if the judge wanted, he could have easily discarded the case. But he didn't. And I thought that on that day, we won in a way that he rejected the case. Uh, the, he rejected the request made by the lawyers of the other party. Now, let's come to the realization that this situation created a situation which I'm going to talk about. So we found some money, borrowed some money from somewhere and we hired a lawyer and we got the lawyer to write a proper claim against the other party. Then the lawyer said to us that, look, you need to not only the judge wasn't happy about the way the claim was written, but he was not happy about the way it, the claim was delivered to the other party. What we had done, me and Wazir, is we drafted the claim and we went to a post office and we basically registered post. Uh, we posted them on a registered basis so that we get a signature from the other party that they have received the claim. Now, Shamshu sent the signature. We received the signature. He received it. But the judge said that when it is an individual, you cannot post it. I know it is a funny, uh, funny rule. I mean, the signature, Shamshu's signature is there that he received it. That means he received it. But judge did not accept the signature. He said, you have to go and hand deliver it. And then do an affidavit that you have hand delivered it. I know it's a strange kind of a rule, but that's the way it is. But with the Jamaat Khana, so we had we have we have sued three three persons. Two are individuals, one is a company, incorporated association. First people are Karim Sumar and Shabshudin Pabani. And the company is Social Development Incorporation that is running the Jamaat Khana. So we have sued the three parties, right? The judge said the Jamaat Khana, you can post the claim to the postal address. But these two people, you have to hand deliver it. So I told Wazir that, look, you, you need to go and hand deliver. But Wazir said that, look, I'm not comfortable. You come with me. So I did. And we basically chose last Friday to go to Jamaat Khana looking for Shamshu and Karim. We parked our car. I don't know if you've been to Sydney Jamaat Khana or not, but it is uh, it is uh, in, a, in an industrial uh, complex where you have so many units and Jamaat Khana happens to be one of those units. And at night, obviously there's no other units open Jamaat Khana is the only activity that is happening. So the whole un complex, the parking and uh, parking belongs, I don't know if it belongs or not, but Jamaat Khana uses the parking for the whole complex. Anyway, so we got the parking about 100 meters away from the entrance of the Jamaat Khana. So as me and Shamshu began uh, walking towards uh, Jamaat Khana, all of a sudden, guess who should basically meet us? Shamshu Pabani. So we, we basically handed the claim to Shamshu Pabani and we said, this is the claim the court has asked us to give you. 
Now we expected him to take the claim and walk walk away as we started to walk away. But he had a game to play. And I have a suspicion, I don't have any proof, but I think he and the volunteers had been instructed not to let me, not to allow me anywhere near the Jamaat Khana. So he started a game. First, he started with, oh, you're not allowed to come here. And I said, why not? He didn't have an answer. And then we started walking. He started following us. And then he would make one comment after another. And then he came down to absolute stupidness, idiotness. And he tried to stop us uh, in every way possible to reach the entrance of the Jamaat Khana. And we were getting very close. And at that time, when me and Shamshu were arguing, another incident happened, which has gone against the Ismaili system. Whilst I was walking towards the gate, the entrance of the Jamaat Khana, another gentleman with his wife was also going in the same direction. And this gentleman happens to be a family friend of mine for many years. And all of a sudden, he snapped. And he wanted to have a go at me physically. And his wife started pulling him and pushing him towards Jamaat Khana, hoping that he would settle down and he would not create a scene, but he had already created a scene. He started shouting that this in Urdu, he said, Ye Allah or Rasul ki bezati insult karta hai, galia deta hai, meaning that Salim abuses the Prophet of Islam and Allah, and he should be shameful and some and things to that effect in a very a screaming kind of a voice. And uh, I've got a video of that, but uh, I'm not going to show it to you. Nor am I going to name this person because at the end of the day, he is my brother. He, he may have done a couple of things wrong on that day, but I can understand his emotions. He is grossly brainwashed. He is a victim. And I do not want to... These victims are the reason, one of the reasons why I am fighting. I am fighting against Aga Khan. I am fighting against his leaders who are completely hijacking people's minds into feeding them with money. Anyway, coming back to this man, the wife basically managed to pull him inside the Jamaat Khana and the volunteers helped him. Uh, the volunteers helped her. Now, there were a couple of things that he did, he did wrong. First of all, the dua starts at 7.30. He comes to Jamaat Khana after the Jamaat Khana finishes at five past eight. And then he's got the audacity to question or, or accuse me of the wrongdoing. That's number one. Number two, he lied. He lied that I have abused Allah and the Prophet of Islam. I have never done that. I have never done that. But I have done something and that is abuse and accuse Aga Khan. 
But on that day, he did not say that I have accused Aga Khan of being a thief. He chose Allah and Rasul outside the Jamaat Khana. It is obvious that he wanted to get me in trouble with the Muslims. And I am not scared of anybody because I speak the truth. And the truth is that I have never, ever spoken against Allah or the Prophet. Yes, I have spoken against stories that people have made about the Prophet of Islam. Bad stories. Okay, I have spoken about that and I have taken people to task. How, how can you speak? How can you create a story about so, somebody who, who lived 1400 years ago? Stories like he, he raped women and he did this and he that. I have stood up against that. I have spoken about it publicly. How could he? All the stories, bad and good. We should not be talking about them in this day and age. Because what happened 1400 years ago, we do not know. We have heard. We have heard stories from people like you and me. How could we? But this man decided to do that. That is mischief. And that is a lie. That's number two. And number three, he basically took my video and in that video, I allowed him to take my video. I could have refused it, but I allowed him to take it. And he started shouting in the video that this man is abusing Allah and the Prophet. But as I said, we will not talk about that. What we will talk about is Shamshu Pabani. So I advanced towards the Jamaat Khana and I fin finally reached the, the gates of the Jamaat Khana. And that intimidated not only Shamshu, but all the volunteers gathered around me. They ganged up. And they said, we want you to leave. We want you to leave. And I said, I'm not going to leave. I am here with Wazir to deliver a claim from the court. And if you should stop me from doing that, I will go and tell the court. I've got the video that you interrupted the process. So they relented. But Shamshu did. Shamshu wanted to create a scene. So at that point in time, a friend of, I don't, I don't think he was a friend when I was in Sydney Jamaat Khana, but he was a very good acquaintance. Whenever we met with each other, his name is Aziz. And whenever we met with each other, we met very with affection and with, with, with good wishes for each other. Okay. So Aziz was a volunteer also. So I took Aziz aside and I, I said to the rest of the volunteers, I said, keep away from here. I am talking to Aziz. I don't want to talk to the whole group of you. I want to talk to Aziz and we will do what Aziz says. Okay. Now, step back. So I started explaining to Aziz that, look, we are here to give a claim to Karim and to Shamshu. But Shamshu created a scene and he is stopping us from giving the claim to Karim. So another thing that I want you to note is all along 
Shamshu said to me that Karim is not has not come to Jamaat Khana today. And the same thing was repeated by the volunteers. Karim has not come today. So we want you to go. And I said to them, you are lying. I know for a fact Karim is here. You're, you are liars. Karim is here. Anyway, I then started speaking to Aziz. And when I was speaking to Aziz, lo and behold, who appears? Karim Sumar. And I said, bloody lies. You just said to me a few seconds ago that the Karim hasn't, hasn't come to Jamaat Khana and here he is. Now, obviously, this was a plan. First of all, they did not want me and Wazir to be anywhere near the Jamaat Khana, number one. Number two, is they, they would be embarrassed. Karim did not want to come to accept the court document in front of the whole Jamaat. Just imagine you are the king and some common man in your kingdom should come and slap you on your face. How would you feel? That's exactly how Shamshu and Karim felt on that day. Now this embarrassment, this embarrassment happened only and only and only because Shamshu decided to create a scene. So today's title, Aga Khan leader becomes Salim's ally. This ally is none other than Shamshuddin Pabani. This is not the first time Shamshu has worked for my campaign. Remember assaulting of Wazir? If you don't remember, let me tell you, let me remind you. A year ago, Wazir wore spy glasses to give the authorities the proof of wrongdoing in the Jamaat Khana. He was picked up and he was instructed by Karim Sumar. He gave the instructions to Shamshu Pabani, okay, to hold him until the police arrived. Now on that day, Karim had not called the police. He was only trying to frighten uh, Wazir. Okay? Because the police never came. Police only came when I called the police on that day. Right. Now, instead of holding him, Shamshu began pushing and shoving him, manhandling him, imprisoning him in his car, and this created the court case. It ended up in the court. And when it has ended up in a court, Aga Khan is going to be embarrassed. Shamshu himself is going to be embarrassed. Karim Sumar is going to be embarrassed. And the Jamaat of Sydney and Jamaat around the world will be embarrassed because of the action of one man and that is called Shamshuddin Pabani. He played straight into my hands. And this was the second occasion he did that. He created a scene on the driveway, on the way to Jamaat Khana. If he hadn't, me and Wazir did not have any intention of creating the scene. We would have very quietly given the claim to him and Karim. Nobody would have found out that there is a court case against, apart from those people who watch my videos. Apart from that, nobody would have found out on that day that we were there to basically give the court documents to Karim. But because Shamshu decided to create a scene, he played again into my hand. The whole Jamaat got to know about it. It created a buzz inside the Jamaat Khana that 
Salim and Wazira here to give a court notice to the vice president and the ex president. Again, the embarrassment created by who? The monkey that flies an aeroplane. This is the ally that I've got. And the other thing that I learned on that day is my presence around the Jamaat Khana intimidates them. I now have one more weapon to fight with. Thanks once again to the policy of the leadership. I wish to congratulate the Jamaat of Sydney for having appointed a goon, Shamshuddin Pabani, as their vice president. Because this image of a goon as a vice president, a representative of Aga Khan, it only encourages and supports my work. Although this move was a political move, Africans did not want the high positions because now they have sensed that the matter has gone to the courts. The matter has gone to the governments. They would like to keep well clear of any leadership positions. And who is going to accept a position, position like that? The goon. Either you have to be crook to accept a position like that in this situation, or you have to be completely innocent, not aware of what is going on and the danger that the leaders are in. The Mukhi Sahibs, the Kamriya Sahibs, President of the council who is in Melbourne, I think she is innocent. I honestly get a gut. My gut feeling is that she is innocent. She doesn't know the danger that she is in. Mukhi Sahib, Kamriya Sahib, and all those people who accept cash, they don't know that they are in danger. But these Africans, they know exactly what kind of danger the leadership is in. And hence they have decided to stay well clear, well clear of leadership positions first time in so many years, in fact, decades, in decades, in the history of Ismaili Jamaat in Sydney, 60 years of history, only two times non-African people have acquired the position of president of the council, only two, only for two years, 58 years Africans. This time African has disappeared. This is the reason. But the choice of leadership, if they should go, who did they, who do they give leadership to? The goon. And that plays straight into my hands. That is in relation to Wazir's case. But I want to show you a video. And I want you to particularly take note of the vice president of Aga Khan. Have a look at this man in red t-shirt. Have a look. Do you think he appears like a civilized leader of Aga Khan? To his credit, Aga Khan 
appears and speaks like a real real gentleman in fact i am a big fan i'm i still am a big fan of aga khan his looks and the way he speaks and the way he dresses himself and the way he conducts himself in the public it is amazing we should all learn from it whether he is a greedy thief is another matter that is completely different whether he is a parasite feeding on the poor is another matter but have a look at this man does he look like aga khan's leader have a look this is the incident that happened unfortunately it is in urdu so you may have to compromise तो कोर्ट ने हमको क्या बोला है कि इसको एक नोटिस सर्व करो और करीब को करो ये हमको मिला ड्राइवर पे ये ड्राइवर पे मिला तो हमने इसको दे दिया हाथ में वो थैंक यू बोला थैंक यू बोले हम चलने लगे और ये आते शुरू हो गया ज्यादा की अब दूसरा अब दूसरा अब हम यहाँ आए वो बोलता है कि आप यहाँ नहीं ये देखो यहाँ अभी नहीं है अभी नहीं है बोरा था अभी अभी बोरा नहीं है झूठे लोग हैं कितने झूठे लोग हैं पीछे वाले गेट से आए आप देखे नोटिस देखे आप चले जाए ये आपका नोटिस कैसे ये देखो ये इंसान होता है ये इंसान होता है उसने नोटिस लिया और चला गया झूठा नहीं होता ठीक है that is the incident that happened in sydney and once again congratulations to sydney jamaat you chose a really good really good leader who will represent you and he will speak on your behalf now let's come to a couple of other things uh, reddit we now have a reddit page i have put the description uh, the link in the description please go and participate in the discussions that are happening there um express yourself good or bad indifferent doesn't matter and uh, the other thing is the petition the canada petition we are about to submit it so please sign it if you already haven't signed it i would really appreciate it uh, we will be sending the copy to the opposition leader of canada i think his name is uh, pierre something but yeah so we'll be sending one copy to uh, cra in canada and the other copy to uh, peer so that's uh, all for from me uh, let me see if there are any questions okay so uh i'm afghan ismail is sponsored by focus why shouldn't i love hazri mam of course you should love hazri mam i am afghan living in canada i was sponsored by for why shouldn't i okay so hayat khan i was an ismaili i am now sunni i was very focused about aga khan many ismaili people said is allah nandi is donated by other people why aga khan get the money other religions feed poor people for free why nandi auction to highest bidder and give to billionaire who pays for focus not aga khan azim jiwani says aga khan he is only a man just like us he is not more divine than us if anything he is less divine due to his scamming of the people he or any of his followers will not debate as they are cowards i was hayat khan says i was volunteering in jamaat khana for a long time they sell a lot of nandis they make money for aga khan Aga Khan didn't donate for poor people around the world. The Ismailis people are blind. Azim says, uh, "What kind of se- what kind of secret are they trying to hide? Not letting anyone inside who is not born or married into their cult. 
discrimination at its finest these are some of the comments so thank you for those comments i appreciate it and uh, that is it for us uh, for this week i'll see you next week until then take care please subscribe to the channel uh, and don't forget to press the bell icon so we can keep you posted all the best see you next week bye